was just shot. He was shot apparently while attending an art exhibition there. We do believe at this point he has been rushed to the hospital. We do not have any information about his condition. Why is this important? Turkey and Russia right now both intimately involved in the war in Syria right now. In fact, on different sides of that war, though there have been negotiating uh, for this ceasefire in Syria for some time, but there have been a number of tensions between these two countries over the last year or so. Again, live pictures from Ankara where the Russian ambassador to Turkey, Andrei Karlov, just shot and taken to the hospital. Mohammed Leela joins us live from the Turkish Syria border. Also with us is Clarissa Ward in Moscow. Again, I want to go first to Mohammed right now to give us the latest information on what exactly is going on inside Turkey. Well, John, we understand that uh, the Russian ambassador, Andrei Karlov, may have been giving a speech at that art gallery when he was shot. We don't know how many gunmen were involved, and of course, we don't yet have a formal claim of responsibility. We know there have been a number of terror attacks inside Turkey just in the last few weeks, uh, major terrorist attacks, in fact, but none of them have targeted a foreign dignitary, uh, dignitary let alone someone as high as an ambassador. And we were talking earlier about this. There there have been some tensions in the past between Turkey and Russia, but just in the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of those tensions die down. Uh, President Erdogan here in Turkey made a very public visit to visit uh, Vladimir Putin, and we know that the two have been speaking on the phone uh, several times, at least seven or eight times, just in the last few weeks, hammering out this uh, evacuation and temporary ceasefire deal in Syria. So this comes at a very crucial time, not just for Turkey, but also with everything that's happening next door in Syria with the official sort of fall of Aleppo and what happens to the militant groups, where do they go after that. Uh, so there are a lot of questions now about how Turkey is going to respond. And of course, the big question in all of this, the big wild card, is how is Russia going to respond? Uh, a lot of that will depend on who was behind this attack, if that information is ever known. Clarissa Ward joins us now from Moscow. Clarissa, in November of 2015, Turkey shot down a Russian plane on the Turkish-Syria border. Uh, it was an Su-24 fighter jet. There have been tensions over the last several years, not to mention going back decades, between Turkey and Russia. But as Mohammed said, of late, the two nations, they had been negotiating on the ceasefire attempts in Aleppo. No, it's extraordinary how much the relationship between Turkey and Russia has improved since the shooting down of that plane, which was possibly uh, an all-time low. We have seen Russia and Turkey cooperating really quite closely, and I should say much to the chagrin of many of the rebel forces in Syria who have started to feel like perhaps Turkey was selling them out uh, as part of this rapprochement with Russia. As Mohammed mentioned, uh, Russia and Turkey working very closely together, trying Trying to broker this Aleppo evacuation deal. There's a big summit here in Moscow tomorrow uh, that Russia and Iran and also Turkey are taking part in as part of ongoing efforts to bring about an end to the Syrian civil war. Turkey's foreign minister is expected to attend that. So certainly the relationship had made some dramatic strides just in the last six months really, particularly I would say since the failed coup attempt against Erdogan earlier this summer. We are getting a little bit more information about Andrei Karlov, who is the ambassador who was shot. We know that his career began uh, in 1976 as a diplomat. He served as the Russian ambassador or then the Soviet Union ambassador to North Korea. He later also served as the ambassador to South Korea. Uh, he speaks Korean perhaps unsurprisingly he studied at one of the most well-known diplomacy institutes here in Moscow uh, and he was attending an exhibition called Russia in the eyes of Turks but of course uh, the real key here John will be to try to find out who was responsible for this shooting was it a Turk was it a Syrian was it possibly a member uh, of a militant group such as Isis uh, only once we have a better sense of who was responsible 
responsible for it and exactly what the motivation was for it, whether it indeed is related to what's happening at the moment in Syria, will we then get a better sense of how Russia is likely to respond, John? And that's the key here. We should say that there have been ISIS-linked attacks inside Turkey over the last year. There have also been attacks linked to Kurdish separatist groups in Turkey over the last several years. We just don't know at this point who is behind the attack. That is something we are going to keep our eye on throughout the day. Mohammed Leela, while we have you with us, can you give us briefly a quick update on, on what's happening on the ground inside Aleppo with the attempts to evacuate some of the civilians there? Well, you know, this attack comes at such an interesting time because today the evacuations went on uninterrupted. Over the weekend there were some problems and it was on again and off again. There were no evacuations over the weekend, but today was actually that first bright glimmer of hope after a dark period. The evacuations went on under, uh, uninterrupted. Turkish officials just today announced that 20,000 people had been evacuated from the eastern part of Aleppo. These are people who had been under siege for several months. They were running short on food and water. Many of them needed medical treatment. In fact, it was so dire that the UN announced today that 47 orphans had been rescued from eastern Aleppo. They were in an orphanage. A number of them needed medical care and they are now getting that medical care. So by all accounts today was, uh, even according to people on the ground, a success because it was laying the foundation to get these people in these besieged areas out and possibly laying the foundation for some sort of tenuous or perhaps even fragile limited ceasefire. Certainly a foundation that you could build on moving forward. But now that the Russian ambassador has been shot and we've just gotten word that he's in critical condition being treated in hospital, the question becomes now, not just what happens in Turkey, but how does this affect everything that's playing out in Syria? Because if it was one of these groups, for example, ISIS that has a presence in Syria or one of the Al-Qaeda groups that has a presence in Syria, the question becomes not just what happens in Turkey, but the connection and the domino effect that takes place in the whole region, starting in Turkey, obviously, but then obviously moving on to Syria. Again, let's just bring you up to speed on what's going on right now. You're looking at live pictures from Ankara, the capital of Turkey, where the Russian ambassador to that country, Andrei Karlov, was shot multiple times, we are now told. Uh, Mohammed Lila just told us he's in critical condition. He has been taken to the hospital, the ambassador has. We will update you on his condition when we get it. But as Mohammed and Clarissa Ward were just telling you, this comes at a critical time in that part of the world. Both Russia and Turkey intimately involved with trying to figure out what's going on in Aleppo and forge some kind of peace or ceasefire there. It is tenuous at best, uh, and this could only make things even more complicated. We will update you on the very latest information as it comes in. We'll be right back.